Hi, welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Teresa, and today we have a very special story time for you. Today we're going to read three books that are all Caldecott Award winners. And what that means is these books have been given prizes for having great pictures in them. So why don't we get right into our first story called A Sick Day for Amos McGee. And let's pay careful attention to these pictures as we read our story. A Sick Day for Amos McGee by Philip C. Steed. Amos McGee was an early riser. Every morning when the alarm clock clanged, he swung his legs out of bed and swapped his pajamas for a fresh pressed uniform. There's Amos and look at his silly bunny slippers. He would wind his watch and set, a, and set a pot of water to boil, saying to the sugar bowl, a spoonful for my oatmeal, please, and two for my teacup. Belly full and ready for the workday, he'd amble out the door. I wonder where Amos is going. Every day, Amos waited for the number five bus. Next stop, City Zoo, the bus driver would call. 6 a.m., right on time, he'd reply. Wow, six in the morning, that's very early. But every day Amos does this and goes to the zoo. Amos had a lot to do at the zoo, but he always made time to visit his good friends. He would play chess with the elephant, who thought and thought before making a move. Run races with the tortoise, who never lost. There goes the tortoise crossing the finish line. Sit quietly with the penguin who was very shy. Lend a handkerchief to the rhinoceros, who always had a runny nose. Look at that rhino, he's even wearing a scarf. And at sunset, read stories to the owl, who was afraid of the dark. Yet there's Amos and the owl. He has his book out and he's reading stories just like we are now. One day, Amos awoke with the sniffles and the sneezes and the chills. He swung his achy legs out of bed, curled them back again, and said, Ugh, I don't think I'll be going to work today. Look at poor Amos. He's there with his teddy bear. His nose is all red. He just doesn't look like he feels very well. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals waited for their friend. The elephant arranged his ponds and polished his castles. The tortoise stretched his legs and limbered up. The penguin sat patiently all by himself. The rhinoceros worried that his allergies were worsening. The owl perched atop a tall stack of storybooks scratched his head with concern. Where is Amos? The animals wondered. Later that day, look at who's leaving the zoo. We've got the rhinoceros and the elephant and the penguin holding on to the elephant's truck. And there's the owl with his storybook and the tortoise, and I see a red balloon in the distance. Hmm. Let's see if that red balloon follows the animals. Oh, and here are those animals, and there is that red balloon, and look, they're waiting at the bus stop 
just like Amos takes the bus every day. How silly is this? There's that number five bus in all of the animals and the red balloon are on the bus. Hooray! My good friends are here. Look at who is visiting Amos. It's all of the animals and the red balloon. The elephant prepared a game of chess. Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm too tired to run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek instead. The tortoise hid inside his shell, and Amos hid beneath the covers. It looks like even Teddy is hiding a little bit. Amos yawned. Oh, I could use a nap. The penguin sat quietly, keeping Amos's feet warm. Achoo! Amos awoke with a sneeze. The rhinoceros was ready with a handkerchief. Just like Amos always has a handkerchief for the rhinoceros, the rhinoceros has a handkerchief for Amos. Oh, I'm beginning to feel much better. Thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed. Perhaps we'll share a pot of tea. Look, there's the tortoise. He's balancing that tray on his shell, bringing everything over to the table where all of the friends are waiting. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we have a morning bus to catch. So Amos said good night to the elephant and good night to the tortoise, and good night to the penguin, and good night to the rhinoceros, and good night to the owl, who, knowing that Amos was afraid of the dark, read a story aloud before turning out the light. I think that owl was happy to hear the story too. There are all of our friends getting a good night sleep and penguins looking out that window towards that big moon we see that that red balloon has left and is floating high in the sky the end what a cute story about a zookeeper who always takes care of the animals. When those animals saw that he wasn't feeling well, they took a trip and took care of Amos too. Our next story, which also won an award for its pictures, is called A Ball for Daisy. And there's something a little bit special about this book. It is a book that has no words in it. So as Miss Teresa turns the pages and you look at the pictures, she's going to tell the story just by looking at those pictures. But if you see something that looks a little bit different, you go ahead and you tell the story yourself too. So let's read A Ball for Daisy by Chris Rashka. Let me see Daisy. Daisy has that bright red ball. We can see the little girl. Looks like she might be running towards Daisy. Daisy loves her red ball. She holds it and she throws it in the air and it bounces after her and she bounces after that red ball. So they both finally need a rest on the couch. We see Daisy and the ball resting in the sunlight, yawning in the sunlight. Uh oh, it's starting to get a little bit dark. 
It's like the sun's going down. Daisy's getting a little bit nervous. So who does she cuddle up with? The red ball. Together they sleep through the night. And in the morning, the little girl gets Daisy's leash and off they go on a walk with the red ball. Daisy looks at the trees and skips along merrily. Finally, Daisy and the little girl and the little red ball get to the park where Daisy and the little girl play catch. Daisy runs after that red ball and brings it back until, oh no, the ball goes on the other side of the fence. How is Daisy going to get her red ball back? Not to worry, the little girl saves the day. She goes over and gets the ball and brings it back. It looks like Daisy has made a new friend. See the little brown puppy who plays with Daisy and the little red ball. Daisy doesn't like that. She looks a little bit upset as the brown puppy plays with the ball. And poor Daisy can't play with her little red ball. And then the ball goes pop. Oh no, overruns the little girl. Daisy looks at that little red ball. That doesn't look like a little red ball anymore. So she looks at it and she gives it a shake. She knows that that little red ball will never roll or bounce again. And she is so sad. Poor Daisy. Here comes the little girl. I think she's going to scoop Daisy up and give her a great big hug. They make their way home from the park. Poor Daisy is so sad. The little girl puts that broken ball into the trash can. It just won't work anymore. There's Daisy. Oh, she doesn't feel like doing anything. She's just laying on the couch. So sad. Even when the little girl comes over and pets her and hugs her and gives her great big puppy kisses, it just doesn't help poor Daisy. The next day, the little girl and Daisy go back to the park and look at who they meet. It's the little brown puppy and another little girl. And they have a blue ball. Look at Daisy, I think. She's starting to get a little bit happier. And off go Daisy and the brown puppy. They're playing with that bright blue ball. And I think Daisy has forgotten all about that red ball. And she loves that blue ball so much that the little girl and the little brown puppy let Daisy keep the blue ball. And I bet, even though they're leaving the park right now, that tomorrow, both little girls and both puppies will be back to play with that blue ball. But for now, Daisy's just going to cuddle up on the couch with her new friend, that new blue ball. The end. Sometimes it's so great just to look at the pictures and get to make up your own story. You don't have anyone telling you what you have to read. You can just make it up. So to end our story time, why don't we read one more story? And it's called The Hello Goodbye Window. And the same man who drew these pictures 
wrote that story about Daisy and the ball. So let's see what he has up his sleeve for this story in these pictures. The Hello Goodbye Window by Norton Juster. Nana and Poppy live in a big house in the middle of the town. There's a brick path that goes to the back porch. But before you get there, you pass right by the kitchen window. That's the hello goodbye window. It looks like a regular window, but it's not. The kitchen is where Nana and Poppy are most of the time. So you can climb up on the flour barrel and tap the window and then duck down and they won't know who did it. Or you can press your face against the glass and frighten them. If they're not in the kitchen, you can't do any of those things and you have to wait until the next time. And if they see you first, they wave and make silly faces. Sometimes Nana peekaboos me, which always makes me laugh. So I get a lot of extra fun hellos even before I get inside. Just look at the kitchen. It's so big. It has a table you can color on and lots of drawers to take stuff out of and play with. But you can't touch anything under the sink. You could get very sick. There are shelves full of glass jars with lots of everything in them. A step stool so I can wash my hands and all kinds of pictures from the olden days. Nana says she even used to give me a bath in the sink when I was little. Really? There they are. Sometimes Poppy plays his harmonica for me. He can only play one song, Oh Susanna, but he can play it a lot of different ways. He can play it slow or fast, or he can play it sitting down or standing up. He says he can even play it and drink a glass of water at the same time. But I've never seen him do that. I think Poppy is just being silly with that. When I stay over, we have our supper in the kitchen too. And when it's dark outside, we can look at our reflections in the window. It works just like a mirror, except it's not in the bathroom. And it looks like we're outside looking in. Poppy says, what are you doing out there? You come right in and have your dinner. And I say, but Poppy, I'm here with you. And he looks at me in his funny way. Just before I go up to bed, Nana turns off all the lights and we stand by the window and say good night to the stars. Do you know how many stars there are? Neither do I, but she knows them all. Look at all of those stars. In the morning, the first place we go is back to the kitchen, and there's a window waiting there for us. You can look out and say good morning to the garden, or see if it's going to rain or be nice. And you can see if the dog next door is doing stuff in Nana's flower beds. She hates that. Look at that doggy. I think he's going to eat that flower. Sometimes Poppy says in a real loud voice, Hello world! What have you got for us today? Nobody ever answers, but he doesn't care. Poppy makes breakfast. He says it's his specialty. My favorite is oatmeal with bananas and raisins that you can't see because he hides them down inside. I find them all. 
Now I think I spy three raisins in that oatmeal. When I get dressed, I help Nana in the garden. It's a very nice garden, but there's a tiger who lives behind the big bush in the back, so I don't ever go over there. Let's see, can you find that tiger? Hmm. I don't know about a tiger, but I do see an orange kitty cat. I ride my bike, too. Not in the street, please. Or collect sticks and acorns. Not in the house, please. Or just kick my ball around. Sometimes when it's hot, Poppy chases me with the hose and I yell, Stop it! Poppy, stop it! Look at Poppy. He's spraying her with water. When he does it, I ask him to do it again. Nana just shakes her head. When I get tired, I come in and take my nap. And nothing happens until I get up. Then, sometimes I just sit by the hello goodbye window and watch. Nana says it's a magic window and anybody can come along when you least expect it. <gasps> Who is by that window? <gasps> Tyrannosaurus Rex. He's extinct, so he doesn't come around much. The pizza delivery guy. Pepperoni and cheese. He knows that's my favorite. The Queen of England. Nana is English, you know, so the Queen likes to come for tea. They could all come, and lots more if they want. And if they do, I'll see them first. Mommy and Daddy pick me up after work. I'm glad because I know we're going home. But it makes me sad, too, because I have to leave Nana and Poppy. You can be happy and sad at the same time, you know. It just happens that way sometimes. When we leave, we always stop at the window to blow kisses goodbye. There's the little girl's mom and dad waving goodbye to Nana and Poppy. When you look from the outside, Nana and Poppy's house has lots of windows, but there's only one hello goodbye window, and it's right where you need it. When I get my own house someday, I'm going to have a special hello goodbye window too. By that time, I might be a Nana myself. I don't know who the Poppy will be, but I hope he can play the harmonica. The end. What a great story. But just like that little girl, I'm a little happy and a little sad right now. I'm a little happy because we got to read three great, terrific stories. But I'm a little sad because our time together is up. But I'm a little bit happy again because I know I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye everyone, see you real soon.